uh, Carrie Kennedy and Ellie Wiesel. Now we're going to lighten it up a little bit. And uh, Deborah uh, Koontz has written a book called Want to Get Lucky. And what do you think it's about? This town, Las Vegas. But it's a little bit of a, of a, um, a spin on Vegas because um, it's kind of got this uh, sex in the city component to it. It's got this uh, inside baseball component, what really happens to uh, the whales in Las Vegas, the whales being the, you know, the, the, you know, the real big gamblers in Las Vegas that catered, get catered to. How did you think about, or why did you think about writing a book about Las Vegas? Well, I, Las Vegas is great fodder for mm -hmm. a fiction writer. The whole world comes here. And I love people, mm -hmm. and that's really what this city is about. It's about people coming to express themselves, and certainly some of them overexpress themselves. But most of the time, people come, they have a great time, they have good meals, they gamble a little bit, they get a little naughty, but not life changingly naughty. And so, as a fiction writer, I thought this is great fun. You know, I can, I can have fun with this, I can make people laugh. I can you know, have a little love, a little romance, a little sex, a little edgy, a murder mystery, of course, but mm -hmm. that's not really the focus of the story. What, what is the story about? Well, it, it, again, it really is about the people that live in Vegas and how they interact with the tourists that come here and how they try, the people that live here in the hotel industry, try to provide a good environment for people to come and play and, and have fun and go home relaxed. and and with a great memory and want to come back. Mm -hmm. I, I found it interesting that it's kind of an inside glimpse of how these big gamblers really live and how they get catered to by the casinos. It is, and that was really hard for me to discover because that's sort of inside information right. here in Vegas. And um, it was fun to watch. It's fun to hear the stories about the big gamblers that come here and what they do, and I didn't even know that at the major hotels there are special, really luxurious sort of apartments um, set aside with secret entrances and, mm -hmm. and a whole different staff and, and everything for the people that come and bring a lot of money to Vegas. And so I wanted to not expose that to the world, but to let people that are like me that come to Vegas and we, and we see what people want us to see, to know that there's a whole other level of, of entertainment and excitement here that is, is pretty intriguing. Yeah, and we, and it's, uh, and we all want to be, uh, be privy to that kind of information, right? The main character, uh, Lucky, is somebody you refer to as a problem solver. What is that position? Well, I took about three or four positions at, at a major hotel here, and I just sort of smushed them into one and, and made them Lucky's position. So she's really in charge of how the hotel interacts with its guests. And if there's a problem that comes up, she has to solve it, whether it's a whale that's out driving around in a Ferrari and gets in, into a car accident and needs a lawyer, or whether it's somebody um, who falls out of their balcony window and lands in the pool stark naked, you know, she's got to figure out how to deal with it. Somebody who locks them out of their room and, and they can't find, find their room and they're sleeping off a bender under the stairwell or under the stairs in the stairwell, she's got to solve the problem, figure out who these people are, what happened to them. And I try to take a lot of characters um, that come to the hotel and exemplify different guests that come and weave them into um, the plot for the murder mystery, and which starts with a girl falling out of uh, a tourist helicopter and landing in the middle of the pirate show, uh, which I guess now is called the Siren Show in front of the Treasure Island, which is now the TI, as Las Vegas loves to remake itself. So um, that's how the book starts. And the helicopter belongs to the Babylon, which is the hotel where Lucky works. And so she has to figure out who this woman was, why she fell out of the helicopter, and so Lucky gets drawn into um, a little murder mystery. And the murder mystery is not the, the real central focus of the story. It's a character-driven story and fun people meant to uh, show the world Vegas and make people laugh and, and have a good time. When you talk about you know, the suites and the, the giveaways that some of these uh, gamblers get, what were some of the things that really surprised you? I mean, what, like for instance, you, you mentioned the Ferrari. I mean, a hotel just gives, uh, you gamble enough money, here, take a Ferrari and go, you know, use it for the weekend while you're here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. They get free airfare, they get free limo, they get a car to drive it, Ferrari, Lamborghini, whatever they want, depending mm -hmm. on how much they spend. They get meals at rest, you know, the highest end restaurants here. They, it, 
they can have shopping sprees at the at the boutiques for their lady. And uh, you so know. they'll just give a player uh, you gamble enough money. They'll just hey, give you a carte blanche. You can go over to uh, Neiman Marcus and yeah. essentially she could spend whatever she wants. So yeah. her husband just is kept in the casino gambling. So Absolutely. he has time to go gamble, right? Absolutely, it's amazing. It is amazing. And I, for me, I, I'm a little Southern girl. I was raised in Texas. You know, it's amazing to me the amount of money that people come here with, and and will gamble with. Mm -hmm. I I don't have the I don't have the nerves for it. Yeah. You've had an interesting background as well because uh, you're an attorney. Right. Right. You've had right. a couple different careers. Yes, I have career ADD. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> career ADD. So, okay. I'm on my seventh or eighth iteration, but, but mm -hmm. storytelling has been something that I've been intrigued with since I was a kid. And uh, I think the first story I wrote, I had, it was in seventh grade, and I had to get up and perform it before the entire school body and all of the parents and teachers. And I thought that was going to cure me of storytelling. Um, but it didn't, and so I've been working on stories forever. But I think as a as a realist, you don't expect to make money as a novelist. You don't expect to make a living. You don't even expect to have a book published. You do it because you love it, and you love playing with words. And obviously, you didn't like or didn't enjoy uh, practicing law. You wanted to write instead. Well, I, I enjoyed practicing law. I actually enjoyed the intellectual exercise of law, and uh, it can be frustrating on a on a practical level and a day-to-day -day level. Um, I enjoyed it. I was a single parent for a long time and needed a way to, to pay the bills and raise my kid. And so uh, that worked out. It was a lot of fun. But in my spare time, I either read or I wrote. And uh, that was always what I liked to do. You're living in Las Vegas now. Uh, right. Let's talk about the type of research you had to do for this book. There is a long list of women waiting to go out on research expeditions with me. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun, huh? Oh, it was a ton of fun. This one was actually fairly benign, um, but the second novel, um, this is Want to Get Lucky, the first novel, and right. it's the first in a series that's been purchased by a publisher in New York, and they'll come out at nine-month increments. The second one is called Lucky Stiff, and it takes place over a fight weekend. And um, so I, I went to Oscar De La Hoya's last fight, mm -hmm. and uh, which was great fun. Sat you know way down front, and uh, and that was good. And and then in, in the third novel, um, it's called So Damn Lucky. And the best thing that I did was go to the uh, second floor at Olympic Gardens, and uh, where, the, where, the, where men, the men perform. The for women, men right? perform for the yeah. women. And I had six, six or, seven or seven women that came along with me that, that night, night and, uh, for, for research, research of course. Yeah. And, but oh my gosh, gosh. I laughed myself silly. It was it was tons of fun to watch the women have fun and the men were getting into it. But it was way way beyond what a little girl from Texas knew. And when you go to uh, like the uh, the fight, when I mean, you go to a you know a huge uh, championship fight, you have celebrities and stars coming out from over the world. Right. Right. And there's a whole different type of energy around that, isn't there? Right, there is. And, and, you know, the VIP section down front with all the Hollywood heavy hitters and that kind of stuff is, is a totally different vibe, a la the whales in, in town here. It's a totally different vibe when you go into a high stakes poker room as it is in the regular poker room where, where I can go play should I want to. And so to be up close and watch how the Hollywood stars interact and, and how they're catered to once again, because um, they bring panache to the event and they want to be seen, um, they also want to see the fight, but they want to be seen. And the hotels want to be seen as being able to attract the Hollywood crowd. And, and the town has gone, Las Vegas has gone from some, sort of the glamour of old to the glitz and, and the celebrity um, status now. And you see celebrities everywhere, and they're used to promote everything from fights to nightclubs to, to restaurants to the opening of a pool, you know, and, and the, you've got to have a couple of celebrities there. And so I it's fun to play with that and, and to watch how people respond. Isn't it amazing how the um, pool industry in <laughs> Las Vegas has become a profit center now? Huge profit center, right? Oh, it's amazing. This yeah. town, and, and I can't keep up with it, and I live here. Uh -huh. The various, the, the iterations that it takes on and the new things and the, and the party pits now in the, in, the, in the gaming rooms, and now you have a whole different section where young people can go and, and get a whole party vibe while you're gambling rather than, than just sit down and play blackjack or poker or whatever you want to do. And, I, and how, the, how the casinos, um, as you say, cater to that demographic? 
by the same token, they have to they cater significantly to Asian clientele, which is exceedingly different from the, the the glitz that you're referring to, right? I mean, it's much more subdued, much more quiet, and the casinos seem to have learned, educated themselves culturally on how to deal with the, all the different segments. They have, and, and it's fun to go into a hotel and you know immediately how they're targeting themselves. And what, because you can't be all things to everybody, even mm -hmm. though Las Vegas tries desperately to be all things to everybody. But the hotels, there's different vibes, and, and you can see where the Asian clientele um, is, is more catered to, or where the kids, um, not kids, from my perspective, kids, but young, young people, yeah. young adults, um, are catered to. And, and it's just a whole different energy and a different vibe. And that's really fun to go from hotel to hotel to hotel. And you feel like you've traveled the world in, in a nighttime. You know, it seems as interesting as Las Vegas is, there doesn't seem to be that many books written about Las Vegas of, of this nature. Well, when I sat down to write a book, you know, I thought, well, where am I going to set it? Because you really, as a mm -hmm. storyteller, you want to pick a, an yeah. interesting setting. And I looked into Las Vegas. Las Vegas was someplace that I know and love. And um, I thought, well, Las Vegas, let's write a funny book. And I thought, oh, gosh, surely it's been done. I mean, it seems obvious to me. But no, there are, usually the Las Vegas books are sort of dark and bodies in the desert and mob and, and CSI and that kind of stuff. And I wanted to write Sex in the City meets Elmore Leonard and Nora Roberts in Vegas. Mm -hmm. So I did. And, uh, and the people are amazed after they read the book. They said, why hasn't somebody done this before? And I said, I don't know, but I'm glad they haven't. <laughs> you know. You've also done research for the book uh, in, in, the, in the adult industry. Right? Mm -hmm. And the adult mm -hmm. video awards are here held in Las Vegas and uh, in the porno world. Right. What did you learn there? Well, it, that was a hard one for me because that is part of Vegas and I can't as a writer ignore mm -hmm. it. But how do you make a fun book about those kinds of industries? And so and I, I've been through a brothel in Pahrump and you know, talked to some of the girls and and tried to work that, and so I made a character in my book, Lucky's Mother, who owns a, a bordello in Pahrump, but her main goal in life is to save these women and get them educated and get them, you know, send them off to be senators or something, and, uh, and so I tried to put a positive spin on it. She's had a lot, of, a lot it. of luck doing that, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't go into, into how much detail that she's, you know, about her luck, but, yeah. you know, and so I play with it, try and make it, you know, real but not seedy. What do you think people's perceptions are of Las Vegas. I mean, I, I mean I, I, in my experience, people think, like, for instance, prostitution is legal here, and, and um, you know, even though it's not legal, it seen, seems to be tolerated. Right. Well, people are amazed when I tell them that prostitution isn't legal in Clark County. Um, but they sort of laugh, and, and I laugh, too, because obviously, as Steve Wynn, I think, has even said, mm -hmm. if, if anybody, whatever they want in this town, they can get. And But that's the same with Dallas, where I grew up, or or Houston or New York, you know, you can find what you want if you want those kinds of things. But um, I think a lot of people don't realize that you can come to Vegas, see great shows, have five-star meals, you know, be catered to at a beautiful hotel, and that's your Vegas experience. It doesn't have to be gaming and, you know, walking the street and drinking too much and, and those kinds of things. There's a, there's a very high-end uh, fun here as well. How long did it take you to write this book? I mean, I remember thinking about quitting law and becoming a writer, too. Absolutely. Okay. I would, I would <laughs> highly recommend it. It's great. <laughs> I mean, it took me about six months, about six months. Um, it's not, it, it's told in the first person, so it's not um, that difficult to write. But Lucky has to be on every page. So that, that was hard. But once you get in, once I, I have my imaginary friends, they talk to me. And so I just write down what they say and off it goes. And was it after completing this book that you, or as you were writing this book, that you came up with the ideas for your second and third? Mm hmm Yeah. I sort of, about halfway through one novel, I will, will sort of get a, a glimmer into what the next one is going to be. And it's, it's hard with a series because everybody, all the recurring characters, you have to know where you start them and where they're going to go over each book. Right. And so that has to be sort of planned out from, from the get-go. And I can set it wherever, whatever time frame I want. The second book is Fight Weekend. The third book is a Halloween, which is really a great weekend here. And uh, the fourth book will be uh, uh, a big poker tournament a la Final Table World Series of Poker Weekend. And the fifth one will be uh, Christmas and New Year's. Uh -huh. Now, do you gamble? Um, 
I write books. And I was a lawyer, yeah, I gamble. <laughs> no, not so much, yeah. not so much. But I have Play a lot poker? of friends. And my son, and, and I have some mm -hmm. friends that are professional poker players. So um, I, I have followed them around watching to write about the poker world, even though I think watching poker is mm -hmm. like watching paint dry. But um, all it, of the stuff that happens around it is fun. Okay. And if people want to come uh, to accommodate you and doing your research, uh, they would... I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Absolutely. No, no, just, just go to my website and, and we'll be good to go. Okay. The name of the book is uh, Want to Get Lucky. It's a fun read. Uh, Deborah Koontz, local author, uh, but national, nationally accredited and credentialed for this book, I should say. There you go. So Available go everywhere. Book. Available so. bookstores everywhere. We know how to get books, right? Right, right. Amazon.com. <laughs> now, now, don't get me in trouble. Yeah. We'll see you next week.